In this series of talks, we'll cover fundamentals about first principles modeling using a set of examples. We'll start with simple example of tank and pool process and we'll go all the way to deriving the model equations for temperature and composition control of reactors. We'll see use of these conservation principles, mainly the conservation of mass and conservation of energy. Conservation of momentum becomes irrelevant in most chemical process systems. We'll start with the use of one equation, one conservation principle, for example, the overall mass balance or the component balance. And then we'll see how to use all these equations together, find a model for a more complex system. Before we go to the examples, I'll briefly cover five steps modeling approach that I'll be using in this example. These five steps approach st start with defining the modeling objective in step one. And then in step two, we gather the process knowledge and information. Step three involves developing the model equations. Step four is simplification of the model and standardization. And step five is the analysis and validation of the model. Now in this talk, our focus will be mainly on step three, developing the model equations. In subsequent talks, we'll cover step four and step five. And for step one, we'll also discuss for each problem, how the variables are linked and how to define the input output variable relevant to a modeling exercise. For step two, whatever knowledge is required for developing the model we'll use, however other information we'll leave for the later stages where we'll do model validation. So this is the five step approach that we'll be following in this series of talks. Now this is an application of the overall mass balance equation. Now this example we commonly refer to as the Wilson drown problem. Just a brief description about the process. There are two pools here. Water is coming to the first pool and then the overflow from the first pool goes to the second pool. And there's another inlet for the second pool and the outlet from the second pool is due to gravitational force. Now the problem we are looking at is if there is a boy standing in the pool and if there is a change in the inlet flow to the first pool, what will happen to the boy in the second pool? And we try to figure out whether the boy Sam will drown or not. Now from a control perspective, you can see here, the H2 is the output, and this one can be considered as a disturbance. Now we have another inlet flow here. We can manipulate this inlet flow F to I to maintain the level in pool two. So that's the control problem. So for the purpose of this control problem, you need to find out the model between the level and the input. Also, you may want to know how to link the input with the disturbance. What will happen with the change in the disturbance? Whether there is at all any effect of that disturbance on this output. Now, this process knowledge is very important for first principles modeling. In fact, first principles modeling is all about modeling the process knowledge. What knowledge you have about the process converting this into a mathematical equation. That's the basis of first principles modeling. Now we'll see how we can find the relation between this output and the disturbance. And in the same way, we'll figure out that we can really relate to the input by using the same equation. Now without further categorizing as disturbance and input, let's start with the modeling example, how to find those relations. Now we'll follow the five step procedure where step one is to defining the modeling objective. And we see that here we are trying to find out the model between H2 and F1i and F2i. So you can define the modeling objective as to find the model between H2 and F1i and F2i. Here we see the output is, for this problem input is, and we have a disturbance variable, F1i. Now when to find the link whether there is a relation between F1i and H2. Now from our process knowledge, we can look at if F1i changes, the F1o will also change simply because the outlet flow from the first pool is due to the overflow. So whenever F1i changes, F1o also changes. So we have F1i affecting F1o. Now when if one O changes, it's going to affect the level of liquid in this tank. So we'll have a link between F1 O and H2. Now when H2 changes, that will affect also F2 O. So there will be 
a link between we'll see that all those variables are related and for this case we can figure out that for these three links we'll have three relations to find out now step two in the five step approach is to gather some information and knowledge for this case we know that f2 o is due to the gravitational force so we'll have f2 o function of h2 and it's a square root function and a constant gamma can be used for this relation we'll need other information for example the area and initial flow rate and all these variables can be collected now our focus will be on the step three developing the model equations now for our case again we do not have any composition control problem so the component balance equation will be relevant also we do not have any temperature in the list of variables so energy balance equation will be irrelevant as well so we're left with only the overall mass balance equation and you see that there are two pools so we'll have to use two overall mass balance equations for this problem now if we write down the overall mass balance equation for pool one we'll write it in the short form accumulation equals in minus out by accumulation will mean rate of accumulation of mass equals rate of mass in minus rate of mass out so for pool one the volume can be given as a1 h1 and you multiply it by rho you get the mass and the rate of change of mass with time will give you the rate of accumulation of mass equals mass in it will be here f1i is the volumetric flow rate multiplied by rho will give you the mass flow rate in and the same way we can have f1 naught multiplied by rho to get the mass out from the first tank now for this case we know that rho a1 both are constant and h1 is also constant because the outlet flow from pool 1 is due to overflow so this entire terms becomes zero and we end up getting f1i equals f1 o so this one relation we get now let's look at the second pool so if you write down the overall mass balance for pool 2 again accumulation equals in minus out for pool 2 accumulation will be denoted by a2 h2 multiplied by rho gives the mass and rate of change of mass with time gives the rate of accumulation of mass equals in here is we have two inlet f1 o and f2 i so we'll have And the outlet is F2O. So this will be given by. Just after further simplification, we'll be able to write A2 we have F1 naught equals F1I. We'll write it in this way. Also have developed the equation that F2 naught equals gamma square root of H2. So if you just implement that, we can further write it down as So this will be the final form of the equation. Now we see here, there are three links. These links, we have seen this equation represent that link. We have this equation is represented here. And we see this equation was represented here. So for this three link, we got three equations. And then putting all the three equations together, we get the final equation in this form. Now a little bit about 
these two variables f1 i and f2 i. We said that here for our case f1 i can be taken as a disturbance and f2 i can be taken as the input. So later we'll see that to find a model between the disturbance and the output we'll consider the input to be constant and when we try to find a model between the input and the output we'll consider the disturbance to be constant. Now so far this equation is the outcome of step 3 which is the development of the model equations. Now here we see a nonlinear term here which needs to be linearized. So step 4 will involve linearization of the nonlinear terms and expressing the equation between the specific variable in a standard form. Meaning in step 4 we will get the relation directly between H2 and either F1i or F2i. And then we will have step 5 which will involve analysis and validation of the model. So we need to analyze the model whether the output directions are accurate. Also we will need to validate the model and one way to validate the model is to get some process data and find the prediction from the model and compare it with the process data for the purpose of validation. So step 4 and 5 will cover in our future talks. So in this series of talk our objective will be mainly on step 3 which is to find the model equations. We'll now look at another example that would involve the component balance equation along with the overall mass balance equation. We'll first look at a very simple process. This may be the simplest form to describe this type of particular model. It's a hypothetical process. A liquid coming in the inlet flow Fi, Cri is the concentration of a component R in the inlet. This tank is in some way just acting as a reservoir. So there is no other stream coming in. We'll assume the tank is well mixed. That will ensure that the concentration of liquid in the tank is the same throughout the tank. Now for this case at a steady value, the concentration of the solute in the tank must be equal to the concentration in the inlet. For this case, again, let's start with the step-by-step -step procedure. So in step one, we need to define the modeling objective. Now which model we are trying to find here for this case? And we need to check whether there is any relation. So hypothetically think about that you want to maintain the concentration of R in the tank by manipulating the inlet flow. Is that possible? Now for this case, if you look at the process here, at a steady value, the concentration in the tank is the same as the inlet concentration. Now if we increase the flow, this concentration remains the same, that will increase the outlet flow. However, it will not affect the concentration of the solute in the tank. So that's from the simple understanding of the process. Again, going back to the idea that first principles modeling is simply modeling of the process knowledge, meaning that you must have proper information and knowledge about the process and you are just trying to find out the mathematical relations to describe the process in the form of a mathematical equation. So from that knowledge, you can say that if you increase this inlet flow, that's not going to change the composition here. So there is no link between CR and FI. Now how this composition can be changed? It's possible only if CRI changes. Now again, if CRI is initially at one value, if you change it, meaning increase or decrease, finally the composition will reach the same as the inlet composition. However, it will go through a transition stage to go from the initial value to the final value. So there is a dynamic relation between CR and CRI. Again, there is no dynamic relation between CR and FI. So here we can only have the output to be CR and the input to be CR. So we'll try to establish the link between CR and CRI. However, there are other variables. Those are somehow related for the process. So if you look at if inlet changes, that does not change the composition. However, that changes the output. So there is a link between inlet flow and the outlet flow. So step two, the process information can be collected. So it will require some sort of information about the dimension of other things which can be collected. Just for clarification here is that this when we write the CRI with no 
reaction term involved will express CR in terms of mass per unit volume. Okay, so that's mass per unit volume. So with this, let's move to the step three, which is to develop the model equations. Now for this case, again, the overall mass balance will give us F I T equals F O T inlet flow equals outlet flow that we have seen for other cases when we have constant volume. Now for the component balance, we have the component R here. So rate of accumulation of R. So again, in the simplest form, we have accumulation equals in minus out. Plus generation minus consumption for the component. However, for this case, we do not have any reactions. So this is zero. And for the same reason, this is also zero. So we'll have again accumulation equals in minus out. So for the mass of the component R, we'll get B C R D over D T. Again, C R is in terms of mass per unit volume. So this gives the mass will equal in will be F I C R I and out will be F O C R. Now, as we have constant volume, we can further simplify this equation to write. As we have Fi equals Fo, I'll write Fi over V CRT So this is the equation relating the inlet composition to the composition of the component in the tank. Now step four and five will involve model simplification, standardization and validation. We will discuss this later. Before wrapping it up, we said that there is no relation between Fi and Cr. And can we see it from the model equation here? Now say if there is no change in Cri, so Cri will be equal to Cr. And always we have the case F i equals F naught. So if C r i equals C r, these two terms cancels out. And D C r t over D t, that becomes zero. So mathematically that shows that if the inlet composition changes, there will be a change in the composition in the tank. However, if the flow rate changes, there will be no change in the composition of the component in the tank.